Hello and welcome to the second video about my Homebrew 6502 based system. Uh, since the last video I've got RAM and ROM wired up correctly, which is nice, with the uh, the RAM in the lower half of memory and the ROM in the top half of memory. And I've modif modified the monitor board to actually be able to uh, program the ROM and the RAM. Uh, the programming of the ROM requires a little bit of rewiring, so I won't be demoing it here, but I'll be demoing programming the RAM as if it were the ROM, uh, and then you can see how that worked. Uh, I've got a little inset video, which is the uh, data and address bus monitor from the board, and uh, without further ado, let's power up the machine. So I'm going to power up the machine with the reset button held down. The reason for that is that I don't want the actual code I've got in the ROM clearing any memory, so we can actually see the effect of the processor working. So if I power up the reset button held down, connect the serial monitor, and then uh, start the serial terminal. Uh, there we are, we've got control. And now I can take the reset line low here and let, take my finger off the reset button. Right, so now the processor has not had a chance to play with memory yet, but we can um, dump the memory from this monitor program and have a look. So for example, if we dump zero page, you can see that there's just garbage in there. If we dump the top of the ROM, the bottom, the yeah, the beginning of the ROM rather, the first page of the ROM, uh, you can see that there is something in there. Uh, the start ROM starts with some of the the, um, uh, the strings used and proceeds with code. So um, the way we actually write into the uh, RAM is with this upload command. So if I were to write to the zero page here, I can just type some uh, hex that. Um, and if I were to do this again, it keeps asking me until I um, enter a blank line. And then if we were to look at the, uh, the first sort of 32 bytes at zero page, we can see that the A, B, C, D, E, F, and so forth have been written. Uh, this terminal program actually allows you to um, helpfully uh, use external programs. So uh, to send date, send files, so I can actually upload a single file to zero page uh, using this terminal program. Uh, and then if I send this, it's a little helper program uh, that will write that file out in hex in a form that the serial monitor, monitor can understand. And then if we actually have a look at what's in zero page, you can see, there we go, the readme file is there. So that's how I uploaded the ROM image. Um, I actually uploaded it um, with the wiring, as I said, slightly changed so that the ROM became writable. But at the moment, the machine is configured such that the ROM is indeed read only. So if we go and have a look and see what the firmware actually does, I've written a small uh, emulator just so that I can test the uh, firmware uh, without having to burn it to the ROM each time. And this emulator, as you can see, it, all the computer does is boot up print the name of the computer system and wait for input. If I hammer the reset button, you might just see that there's a screen is cleared with hashes just before the actual screen is properly cleared with spaces. And we can see that if we look at the code in the reset uh, vector. So the first thing we do is just to bring up the processor. So we disable interrupts and we make sure we're using binary and so forth. Um, we then clear the zero page to zeros to make sure everything's uh, sensible. Uh, and then we clear the screen with hashes, reset the serial port, which is not yet implemented, and then screen, clear the screen with spaces and actually write our banner. So if the uh, processor is working correctly on boot up, uh, we should end up with that screen image you saw written into memory somewhere. So uh, we should also be uh, in the, the REPL um, repeatedly uh, bouncing around inside a uh, a function which is trying to wait for serial input which of course is not going to get any because we don't have any um, uh, we don't have any input capability to the computer yet um, if we just have a quick look and see um, this it will actually be the uh, serial get character function and we see that essentially the first of that is is the first part of that is load uh, the length of the input buffer and if it's zero go back to waiting and if we look at the map of the ROM it's actually the beginning of it sorry uh, we see that here uh, serial get 
character is actually at EOC6 in the ROM. That's where it should be in memory. So we hopefully that the processor will, when we reboot, start moving around in that area. So let's go back down to here and let the processor do its thing. So we take the reset line high, which means the processor will start. And now let's hold the processor and see where it is. And it's currently reading uh, E0 from zero page, which is actually, I think, the correct thing because that's the serial buffer length. So we should be um, just about uh, in that loop. So if I cycle through, yes, indeed, EOC8, and then the next cycle will be EOC9, and then where to jump to. So you can see it doing the right thing. And in fact, we can single step, and we can see that the if we single instruction step, which only looks at the beginning of instructions, we see that the processor is indeed jumping between EO and e, EOC6 and EOC8, which is as we would expect. We can also just check that it's getting the right values there. If we dump the um, EOC00, the, the uh, sort of 16 bytes around EOC0, uh, we can see that EOC6, which should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this which should be A5, uh, which is what it's getting. Good. And if we step in the machine, we see that uh, at C8, uh, F, C, e, o, C8, we get F0, which is again what we, what we should be getting, which is good. Um, we can also check that the processor has done the right thing in terms of uh, clearing zero page, clearing the screen, etc. So if I let the processor continue to run, um, we can have a quick look at zero page while well, the processor is running, of course. Uh, and you can see that, yes, indeed, zero page is clear, apart from some housekeeping stuff at the bottom, which is what we expect. And if we look at screen memory, which starts at uh, 7B00, and let's have a look at the first page of that, we can see that screen memory has indeed been set to the appropriate values. And to check, show that this really is working, um, I'll quit out of the serial monitor and stop. The switch off the machine. Again, I'm going to boot with reset held down so the processor can start. Connect the serial monitor. Take the reset line low. And then let's just look at zero page again. And garbage. And look at screen memory again. Garbage. But if we let the processor run, which it is now doing, and dump zero page. We again have a cleared zero page, and if we dump screen memory, uh, oops, 7BF0, that's not right, 7B0, 0, 0, okay. dump screen memory, we can see, there we are, we have the appropriate um, contents. So the processor is now working. It appears it can read and write memory. Uh, we can directly poke memory in and out of the processor. So the next thing to do will be to wire up a uh, little, uh, wire up the ACIA, which is the uh, Asynchronous Communication Interface Adapter, I think if that's what it stands for. And that will allow me to connect the serial port to the computer so we can actually start to con interact with the computer directly rather than having to just examine bits of memory location. All right. Well, thanks for watching.